What's good everyone, it's your boy Dak908, aka the Dig Dug himself, and today guys, I want to go over 10 monsters that I actually would like to return in Monster Hunter Wilds. Now this was going to be like a top 10 list or whatever, but I figured, eh, there's just 10 monsters I kind of just want to see again. It's been a long time since we've seen some of these guys, and other ones we just saw, but I want to, if anything, make sure they get into the game. Now this is not to say there's other monsters on this list, or that's rather not said on this list that I want to return, but I kind of figured they were like shoe ins things like Diablos and whatnot. But to start the list off, let's start with my favorite monster of all time, Urigan. Now Urigan is a monster that basically no one likes at all, but I remember fighting him and I told myself, once I beat him, I was like, I felt at the time in which I fought him and tried that I was now an accomplished hunter. So he's always kind of been like that one for me. Whenever I think I'm not a very good hunter or when I think I'm kind of like losing myself, I go back and look at Yurgan. It's like, no, Yurgan for me was the, the one who punched my ticket and said, you are a good hunter. And it was at that time that I kind of felt like I was slowly getting to the grips of Monster Hunter. But after I finally beat him, I realized, you know what, I'm actually pretty good at this game. And my love for him has kind of led me to continue doing what I do right now. But outside of those, you know, nostalgic features, he's come a long way. Like before his armor and gear was pretty bad. And at least in base world, his armor and gear was actually really, really good. As far as like Lansing goes, he was like the, the one-stop shop for Lansing gear. Uh, the weapon was okay. It was decent. It was it was solid. It was like a, a proper like B minus tier. However, since you know G rank came in, master rank, whatever you call it, not so much the case. But it's still some very solid armor if you want to be a lancer. And I mean, until you can mix a setup at least in Iceborne. Uh, up until then, his armor was pretty good as far as lancing went. I want to see your gang come back again because they did buff him for Iceborne and World. I wonder if they'll do the same again in Wilds if he decides to come in because, I mean, I kind of like the guy. And I feel like he kind of fit a little bit. Speaking of fitting, there's a couple of the monsters on here that I kind of feel are a bit not so much fitting as far as the theme goes, but I believe this monster itself is actually superb for it. Every monster in the game has different biomes and such. Zamtrios, okay. He is a monster who's more akin to, you know, the Arctic nature. However, he does have a subspecies, the Tiger Stripe Zamtrios. And I think that guy, at least from what we've seen thus far, we've only seen literally one biome as of recording. Tiger Stripe Zamtrios would be perfect to fit in that particular desert because, I don't know, I kind of feel like he would, you know. There's all the sand because it's like not like the Great Deserts of Forbidden Lands, I believe is what it's called. It's not like he wouldn't fit in a situation like that because he fits in the dunes. He's actually home in the dunes. So I kind of feel a monster of his design, of his typing, within the desert area would fit in a desert region. On top of the fact that we have all the Leviathan monsters that's floating around now, I say all of the, there's a few Leviathan monsters, uh, well one I would like to really say, that we saw in the trailer. Didn't get a good look at him, but if you look real close, that's a Leviathan, you know what I mean? So hey, why not throw in an amphibian kind of creature in there? If a Leviathan can fit, an amphibian can fit. It's kind of how I see it. Now, as far as his other brother, the standard Zamtros, I like to see him come back as well. I'm assuming it's going to be an ice location because it tends to always be in a monster in a game. If not, like, strictly an ice location because Iceborne, we didn't have one until they were like, hey, yo, here's a whole ice area. But more often than not, they tend to give us an ice area in a monster in a game. And if they do have one, I'd like to see him return. Heck, I don't care if they even bring back, actually, if this is a New World game, I don't know if I care for them to bring back the Hinterlands. Unless they expand, because I think the Hinterlands isn't actually all that great, me personally speaking. As far as monsters go, that I believe could totally fit the Core Peko. Now, the Core Peko, when you do fight it for the first time, you also fight it in the desert. So, as far as the desert fairing monster and what reason we have seen thus far, the Core Peko will be great. On top of the fact that Core Peko has not been seen since the third generation between it and its subspecies, the Crimson Core Peko, we've lacked this funny bird for the longest so it'd be really cool to see him make a return not just for the fact that he would fit in the game as far as like the uh as context goes it's like in the biome but like it'd be really really cool to have a monster like him in this particular landscape so because the game itself is set to be like super open world or whatever you know there's going to be other monsters in the area it just roars and then that monster shows up and usually just like it did back in the day, the monster will come out of basically nowhere and you'd be like, dude, what the heck are you doing here? And the same thing can happen. You could be fighting your core peck and then out of nowhere, those big bear dog things pull up. Or, I don't know, 
par for the course, Devil Joe shows up or something like that, you know? So I like Hor Peko as a monster because it adds a level of chaos to any hunt that you're in because at any given time he can call someone that you are not equipped to fight at the time. Now another po another Pokemon, another monster I like to really see come back, mostly due in part to the fact that I feel like they're catering to the fourth generation of Monster Hunter. I did talk about uh, Zamtros who was also a fourth gen monster, but what about Nurcella, the spider-like creature thing that we don't ever really, you know, haven't seen since the fourth gen. Now I know what you guys are thinking, Dak. We literally just got a spider in Rise. I uh, right now, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I can't remember its name. Uh, Future me, put the name up here or whatever. I'm sure Future me is editing this right now and is doing all that right now. Anyway, that spider is super cool. I quite like it. I like it and I like the suspects. I like the suspects a little bit more, but let's give it up to the to the OG, the Neurocella. You know what I mean? Let's bring him out there. I don't really feel we should bring a lot of monsters from Rise into this game because we literally just got those monsters and a lot of the monsters that are in Rise, they fit in line with the area in which Rise is. But I kind of want to feel like if you're going to bring, if we're going to be in the, the new world, you can bring monsters that we've not seen in a while who are catering to the people that are already in the new world as fourth gen characters like the ace lancer little miss forge or Gemma, i think that's your name bring in a, a few more fourth gen monsters you know what i mean like like caters to that group speaking of catering and fourth genning what about damaren damaren was like the first monster you quote unquote fight in for you because you're about to pull up to the port or whatever and then like your ship gets attacked by a daren i would love to see either jen or daren come back it doesn't matter which one i love both of them uh, Gen Moran is actually one of my favorite Elder Dragons of all time, and unfortunately, Valmoran is basically like a slightly better Gen in my opinion. The fights are relatively the same, but I like how Da fights a little bit better. So I'd be okay with them bringing in Daren or a another Moran type monster because I mean you have this massive desert, and the Great Desert is where these guys were, and I'm pretty sure the Great Desert is Old World. But who's to say that the king of this massive desert? can't also be another Moran, you know what I mean? I think it kind of fits, realistically, my humble opinion. But now, I know what I've said before, many, many moons ago, they're not necessarily the best, but in my opinion, they're some of the most necessary monsters. What I refer to lovingly as rank two monsters or tier two monsters, think things like Puke Puke, Palumalu, Barith, and in this particular case, Conga La. You know, the little fart monkeys. I think those guys are cool. Okay, they're cool. I like them. They're they're quirky, they're weird, they're a little bit chaotic, and I really like it when Monster Hunter stops being super edgy and starts being li just a little funny, you know what I mean? Not like super funny, not like Guardians of the Galaxy where everything's supposed to be a joke and it's all quippy and it's not very funny at all. Not that kind of funny. I mean, funny is like, you just fought a dragon, now fight a monkey who farts on you. That's funny, okay? It's it's silly and it's funny. Bring Kongala back. But I think these guys are really fun to add in, mostly in line with that of like uh, Korpeko because they are chaotic monsters, but they are tier two monsters. Monsters are a little bit stronger than like your great jag and stuff like that. These monsters, in my opinion, are like the meat and potatoes of like the lore and the and the uh, the lifestyle of all the the people who live within the world of Monster Hunter. These monsters themselves are not chaotic. Well, not chaotic. They're not like traumatic threats. Like if one shows up to a village, it's not gonna wipe out the whole village. But if like a Rathalos shows up to a village, it might very well wipe out the entire village. And who's to say that there's not like lesser hunters, so to speak, who are taking care of these rank two, rank one monsters? Because if the game was chock full of just rank three flagship monsters, I kind of feel it loses the whole allure, in my opinion. You want to start from the bottom and aim for the top. But if you, if the bottom is all the way at the bottom and one step from the bottom is literally the top, I don't really think it's a very good fun curve. I think the most interesting and unique monsters are the ones that people tend to forget about and the ones who don't necessarily make top 10 lists because they're not flagships. Uh, flagships are designed to be loved by all. But these guys, the little guys, the guys in between, the hardworking blue collar class of monsters, okay? These guys are amazing. I love these monsters, okay? It, to me, they're the, the bread and butter of the series, whether you think so or not, because these are the ones that most people are gonna fight up until they get to the end of the game and they tend to forget about them, but it was those guys that got up to the end anyway. Nevertheless, that's kinda how I feel about Kongala. He's a quirky little guy. I kinda want him in because he's a lot of fun and we haven't really seen him in a bit. I think it was in Gen. It'd be cool to bring him back, you know what I mean? Now, another monster that I, I say is super, super near and dear to my heart 
is Ignactor. I would love for Ignactor to make a return, mostly because he himself is a monster who doesn't really get a lot of respect. Look at Lobby Sauce in Gen 5. They literally gave Lobby Sauce Ignactor's fire, no pun intended, and well, stole Ignactor's fire, no pun intended. And I think that's that's a huge disservice to Ignactor. Ignactor's whole gimmick was he would dig under the lava and then he would soften his body up so that you can actually do the damage to him. However, if he stays out of lava long enough, his body hardens because his body is basically molten lava. And after a while, it turns into like magma rock. And then a lot of your attacks would bounce off his body. Uh, he had beams with an S. <laughs> uh, he was a super cool monster. His, he was lovingly referred to as Clack Clack because of the sound his beak would make when he's about to fire his beam. Super cool monster. I can't, like, you just look at this thing, okay? Why don't we fight him more often? Last we seen of him was, I believe, in Gen, and he was kind of okay there, but I think now with a new engine, because it's totally a new engine this time, and all the things we've learned from World and Rise, they can totally make him really cracked, and it'd be a lot of fun to actually fight this guy. He's just been missing for a really long time, and he's a Leviathan, and people tend to give Leviathan a lot of grief, and I really think that's not very fair to them, because they are very much fan-favorite monster types as well. Uh, speaking of fan favorite monster types, I was gonna mention Legiacris, however, Legiacris would, in my opinion, 100% need underwater combat, and until that is confirmed, I, I won't put him on this list, even though I'd love to just say, give me underwater combat, and I name off like 15 water monsters, I'm not gonna do that, because that's not necessarily a thing that could, in, in truth, happen, so, as far as a Leviathan goes, give me Ignactor, because he can very well work well, without water I mean he's in the volcano almost every monster in the game has a volcano so just throw him in there I'm sure we're gonna have one and then Ignactor could be like the apex monster for that because you know the fire pike wyvern guy who literally spits beams of lava at people that's a pretty badass monster speaking of badass monsters my transitions are really bad I apologize I'm doing this all in one take usually I would do this in multiple I'm not going to the b52 bomber himself basil goose bring him back he's an invader monster a bad guy if you will that's my classification for them and in my opinion the best flying wyvern they've made in at least a decade straight up baz is amazing like briefly i'll go over him in case you guys don't know who baz is baz is a monster whose whole point is he would fly over you drop scales that fall from his body these scales after a set amount of time will explode now he drops a ton of scales so he like carpet bombs an area with explosives and then you're running for your life because you don't get blown up. And then even has Seething Baz, who does everything Baz does, but more. He even has a supernova attack where he just explodes 95% of the entire space that you can actually be in with him. So Baz, I kind of want him to come back. He's just a really cool monster. He has a really great gimmick and I really think that he should make a return in this game because now since the world is more open, Imagine you're fighting your main target and because he's an invader, he'll show the hell up and you look off in the distance and like, dude, I think that's a Baz. And then you hear the roar and then you see the scales and you're like, holy crap, you start crapping your pants, you know what I mean? I kind of think that would fit really well with the fact that like this monster can literally show up out of the blue and since it's not zone based anymore, he'll just pull up and follow you and do whatever. I think that's a dope idea. Bring Baz back. Now, the last monster on my list is going to be the only Elder Dragon on my list. This is an Elder Dragon I've been pining to get a return. Dalmadur. The big, massive, giant snake wyvern endgame Elder Dragon boss thing, okay, from For You. This thing, aesthetically, is just cool. It's a giant, giant, giant snake. It's, it's cinematic for some of the best in For You bar none hands down and I would love to tangle with this giant snake again now I believe the fight wasn't super 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 dope because the limitations of the, the 3ds and everything he kind of stood there a little bit well a lot of a bit and kind of did just a beam here a hand swipe there that kind of thing but I really felt that now with the bigger engine the better engine the more detailed way in which you can program these monsters he could definitely shine now. Imagine you're fighting this guy and then you literally run up his body. Well, you got to run up his body in the other game, but imagine running up his body when he's actually moving and like you focus on a weak spot or whatever, you break his, his eye or something. And then like, because you do that, his body falls down. You have your people underneath you fighting him as well. Like imagine this fight being a moving battle as opposed to a standard stagnant stationary assault. Imagine you're running around him or he's moving through the area and then you're on your your secret and everything you guys are like 
battling sort of in stages because it's a huge kind of thing so you want to like break the arms first break the the legs or whatever go after the head that kind of thing you know break him down the stages have the fight more mobile just just bring him back do something giant massive snake wyvern just looks so cool it be, just do it okay just do it look at the cutscene and tell me you don't want to fight this thing okay come on yeah and with that said that is my list these are all my personal opinions on why I want these monsters in they may not be very resonant with you but these are just things that I kind of want because you know hey sometimes you just got to be very biased about what you do maybe next time I do a video like this I'll probably more than likely do a better job of putting some objective and some and some subjective points especially when it comes to the monsters that I don't want to bring back that video will come out a little bit later probably after the next showcase but I'll take a better time better care at making that video because I know it's going to be a very divisive video for some but with that being said everyone it's been your boy Dak908 thanks so much for watching to the end I apologize this video didn't find you very well but if it did have a good day and even if it didn't find you all have a good day. Take care.